بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعه داه أما بعد Today's session we return to a study of the sifat or the characteristics of the huruf that is the characteristics of the letters that is that the letters in the Arabic language in relation to the recitation of the book of Allah Azza wa Jal, they have sifat or characteristics that are of two categories. The people of knowledge, the scholars of qira'ah, categorize the letters in the Arabic language in relation to their characteristics into two main categories or two types of sifat, yani two types of, two types of characteristic. The first type is known as the sifat al-lazima, or the sifat al asliya as they were referred to, and that is the intrinsic characteristic. Yani, the characteristic that is present within that letter by nature of the letter itself. Regardless of where the letter is, this is the nature of the letter, this is the characteristic that is present within the letter. And that is referred to as the sifa al lazima or the sifa al asliya it is a characteristic that remains with the letter, is always present. Uh, and the second characteristic, or the second type of characteristic scholars mention is the sifa al-arida or al-aradiya. These are the incidental characteristics, yani those characteristics that come upon the letter based upon where those letters fall and the letters that come after them, or the letters that come before them, or the haraka that is upon them, fatha, kasra, dhamma, uh, and so on. If they come in or at the end of particular words, and then those words are followed by other words, yani there are a number of combinations that we'll get into, inshallah, as we move uh, further into the ahkam or the rulings related to tajweed generally. And those are where the other well-known rulings come in. Yani that which is related, for example, to a tafkhim that which is related to tarqiq, that which is related to idgham, that which is related to ikhfa, iqlab, idhar, mad, qasar, ghunna. All of these rulings are related and have a connection to the incidental uh, characteristics that will come later, inshallah, as we progress through the book. And so, again, to reiterate, one of the reasons we chose the Matan of Al-Jazariya is because of <clears throat> the uh, beautiful construction and arrangement of the book in terms of him beginning first and foremost with what is most important for us to have understanding of and understand well. And that is, number one, the makharij of the huruf, the places where the letters come from, because that is the origin of pronouncing any letter, knowing where it actually comes from. Particularly with us who were raised in uh, the Western countries speaking the English language. The English language doesn't really use the areas of the mouth <coughs> that are available to the speaker. But the Arabic language, يعني, subhanallah, uses every area of the mouth and the tongue and the lips, and the throat even. And the jawf. <laughs> and so the... Arabic language, Ikhwan, is far, far greater in using the areas of the mouth and the areas of articulation than the English language. Therefore, when we are used to using and, and pronouncing and articulating ourselves by way of a language that in terms of usage of the areas of the mouth and the tongue is relatively lazy in comparison, we have to acquaint ourselves with those characteristics. There are certain letters that we just wouldn't pronounce any letter in the English language with like that, kha, wad, sad, ta. These are letters, ikhwan, that we have ain. We have no comparison uh, in the English language, so we have to acquaint ourselves with them. And then even those characteristics that may be similar to letters that we use in the English language, again, we have to familiarize ourselves with the characteristic of that letter and the difference between that letter and another letter that may resemble it. And so the knowledge of the makharij, number one, the, yani the places of origin, throat, lower, middle, upper throat, the mouth, the back of the tongue, 
يعني the middle of the tongue, the front of the tongue, the usage of the teeth, the lips, the na nasal cavity. All of these areas, إخوانا, are important for us to know where the letters originate from. And so, the study in relation to Al Jazeera begins there. Again, إخوانا, as we go along and we look at the incidental characteristics uh, and the sifat al arida you're going to see that there are some issues related to, for example, letters that are close in terms of the makhraj or letters that have the same makhraj. We have letters that emulate, for example, from the throat. And you may have letters that emulate from the same, two letters coming from the same part of the throat. But there's a difference between the manner in which that letter is to be pronounced and those differences occur because of characteristics. Or there may be differences that occur only when those letters come together. Uh, and so these uh, differences must be studied, understood, and, and uh, learned. The uh, issue that we looked at yesterday, Ikhwan, and again, as just to reiterate, it is majorly important that we are clear in relation to the characteristic and the sifa that we looked at yesterday and the one that we're going to look at today because there is a difference between the two but this is one of the areas with the talib of tajweed one of the areas that causes confusion because of something of an overlap that occurs in relation to these two characteristics we said that each of the characteristics that we're going to take we're going to look at the characteristic and then the fact that it has an opposite since we categorized the sifat yesterday into two categories, those sif that is the sifat al-asliya, the sifat al-asliya, the, uh, the, those uh, characteristics that are intrinsic to the letter, that we categorize them into two categories. The sifat al-lati laha did, the characteristic that have an opposite, was sifat al-lati laysa laha did, and the characteristics that have no opposite. In this, in this session, yesterday's session, and uh, possibly in tomorrow's session, we'll look at all of the characteristics that have an opposite, uh, and we will try uh, to conclude with them in tomorrow's session, bi'idhanillah. And then we're going to look at those characteristics that have no opposite. And so we mentioned that there are four main characteristics that have opposites. So if we look at them with their opposites, then we have eight characteristics. But if we remember the characteristic itself, the four, then that simplifies the affair. We just have to remember it has an opposite. The name of the opposite is such and such. And the letters of the opposite are the letters that remain after knowing the characteristic itself or the letters of the characteristic itself. So yesterday we looked at Al-Hams uh, and we discussed the fact that Al-Hams has a connection to the uh, the expulsion of the air from the mouth, the expulsion of air from the mouth, and we said Ikhwan, that uh, it has or it is to be understood in a manner that is related to the manner in which air and the breath is expelled from the mouth. As it relates to hams, then we have a stronger expulsion of air from the mouth and the vibration that is present within the voice box although the voice box issue is not as uh yani, categorical in relation to hams as the issue of the expulsion of the breath from the mouth the hams incidentally uses the ha at the end of the alphabet not the initial ha uh, and so here Hams deals with the expulsion of air from the mouth and we said that the letters of Hams revolve around a three Arab a word a three word combination of three Arabic words uh, and they are sakata fahathahu shakhsun sakata fahathahu shakhsun sakata being one word fahathahu being considered another though we have words and letters here uh, and shakhsun being a third. Sakata fahathahu shakhsun. All of the letters that make these three words up, these are the letters of Hams. Seen, kaf, ta, fa, ha, tha, 
ها شين خا صاد. And so rather than saying the letters of Hams are seen kata ila akhiri dalik, it is much easier to remember sakata fahathahu shakhs. And you'll find these word combinations in a number of the areas of tajweed. And so we need to acquaint ourselves with memorizing these uh, word combinations. Simple, ikhwan. Sakata fahathahu shakhs. If you repeat that 10 or 20 times, Ikhwan, you've memorized it. Sakata fahathahu shakhsun. Sakata fahathahu shakhsun. Immediately then, when you come across that which is related to Hams, yani it, it shouldn't require for you uh, to give it much effort in terms of thought. The only thing that you need to remember is, oh, sakata fahathahu shakhs. If it is one of those letters, then it is the letters of Hams, the letter is considered Mahmus. If it is not present within these combinations, this word, these word combinations, then it is from the letters of its opposite, which is Al Jahar, Al Jahar, which is to make the word apparent. And so, to reiterate, Hams is in relation to the flowing of air and the expulsion of air upon reciting or upon pronouncing. And articulating the letter S, at, ak, af, ah, af, ah, ash, ah, as. So we hear the expulsion of uh, the air as we recite those letters. And Jahar being its opposite. In today's session, then, we're going to look at another characteristic. This character, or yesterday's characteristic, revolved around the expulsion of air from the mouth. The expulsion of breath from the mouth upon recitation. Or the absence of that. Or the restriction of the expulsion of the breath. And there being something of an extra vibration within the voice box when one recites the letter itself. In today's session, we're looking at a sifa or a characteristic that studies the letters from a different angle. And so again, Ikhwan, it is not that one of these characteristics is relative, relative to some letters and another is relative to others. These characteristics and their opposites look at the letters from varying angles. It is just, for example, if we were to hold a book... This book, we can look at it from the angle of the length and breadth of the book and width. Or we can look at the book from the angle of the weight of the book. Or we can look at the book from the angle of the material that the book is made from. These are all different ways of looking at the same thing. These different manners then, or these characteristics that are related to the letters, you shouldn't understand that each letter is going to fall into one of these characteristics. No. We may have a, have a letter and it has a number of characteristics. Uh, and being familiar with them is of the essence. In today's session then we look... At Ashidda, another characteristic, one an important characteristic, and that is the characteristic of Ashidda. Uh, this characteristic and its opposite, and there is one in between in this one, Ikhwan, although, although I know we, we mentioned we have the characteristic and its opposite, but this in particular has one in between the two. So we have two opposites and uh, a central uh, category. This characteristic looks at the letters from that which is related to the sound of the letter. Either the letter is restricted or the sound of the letter continues. And again, Ikhwan, you can see possibly why uh, many of the students who begin and who approach the affair of studying Tajweed become confused with this categorization because one may say and one may conclude well 
How is this any different from the category we looked at yesterday? There is a difference. The continuation of breath or the restriction of breath is one thing, which is what Hams and Jahar looks at. While the continuation of sound, that is the sound of the letter when it is pronounced, is another thing altogether. There is inevitably going to be crossover. Because if we have a letter that has a continuing sound, then most likely, again, most likely, there is going to be a continuation in the expulsion of breath. But not necessarily. Since there are some letters that we have a continue or something of a continuation of sound, but we don't necessarily have the expulsion of breath. Dad, for example. If one were to say, If you look at the letter, There is something from an extension of the pronouncement of the letter without the expulsion of air. The pronouncement of the letter does not necessitate the expulsion of air, which is different, for example, uh, with the ca- or the case is different with letters such as ash, sheen, ash, or s. Here we have the pronouncement of the letter and something of the expulsion of air. In some cases, it's quite strong. In some cases, not as strong, but we have expulsion of air nonetheless. And so we 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 must be clear then that when we're dealing with Yesterday's characteristic, we're looking at the flowing of breath and the expulsion of air from the mouth upon the recitation of the letter. As, we hear the air, we hear the breath. F, ah, as, ah, ash, ah, as, we hear the breath leaving the mouth. There is an issue, though, that we're going to look at. Uh, one of the issues that is Im- that is important, Ikhwan, and many misunderstand, and that is what is related to kaf and ta, ak and ta. We mentioned it yesterday that we're going to look at it today, but we will come to it. Bi'idhnillah. So the first of these characteristics then is the characteristic of shidda, and shidda, Ikhwan is a reference to a strong sounding letter that has with its pronunciation restriction of the sound of the letter and so the letter itself is strong when one pronounces it It, the sound is strong but we have a restriction of the sound of the letter so there is minimal continuation minimal continuation and in some cases, with some letters, no continuation at all. And so this is the letter, or this is the characteristic of Shidda. The characteristic of Shidda <coughs> is gathered with the word formation Ajid Qattin Bakat. Ajid Qattin Bakat Ajid literally meaning I found Or I have found, I find Qattin here a reference to a woman's name Bakat meaning crying, she cried So I found Qat crying This is for, for those who understand the Arabic language Of course this is of benefit uh, for those who don't understand the Arabic language, then memorize these words. They'll you'll increase your Arabic vocab. But you need to understand that the letters that are present within these words are the letters of Shidda. Ajid, Qattin, Bakat. And so to mention the letters one by one, Hamza, Jim, Dal, Qaf, Ba, Ba, K, 
kaf ta again alif or hamza jim dal qaf ta ba kaf ta and so here we have eight letters of shidda when we come across them we find that there is a restriction of the sound particularly when they uh, are uh, or they have sukun upon them when the letter is sakina then uh, the letter we have a strong restriction of the sound uh, in relation to those letters so if we were to take them one by one yu'minun yu'minun if we look at yu'min that the yu here is the uh, hamza yu'minun there is virtually no continuation of sound yu'minun it is almost as though the letter is 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 halted right at the place of the makhraj and this is what needs to be uh yani understood that we have the these letters they have a strong reliance upon the makhraj of the letter itself and that is the letter relies strongly upon the makhraj uh, and so this heavy reliance upon the makhraj causes this restricted sound that we have because particularly when we, when we recite it and it is sakin or sakina we have this strong because of the strong reliance upon the makhraj the strong reliance upon the place of origin of the letter when we when we have and place a sukun upon the letter we hear this restriction being uh made manifest yu'minun yu'minun edge 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 فلا رفث ولا فسوق ولا جدال في الحج so we hear the letter being held almost at its place of origin held at the makhraj edge ad ab ak at on the other end of the spectrum or rather before we mention that it, it would be easier to mention what is between the uh, characteristic that is on the other end of the spectrum and that is what is known or referred to as at tawassut that which is between shidda and the other end of the spectrum known as rikhwa we have at tawassut at tawassut is a medium point between the two extremes here we have shidda where we have the sound restricted edge ad and then on the other end of the spectrum we have a continuation of the sound s ash but in between shidda and rikhwa we have this tawassut or sometimes referred to by the scholars of qira'a as al bayniya al bayniya which is between the two and that is a reference to five letters and those five letters are present within the word formation lin umar lin umar uh lin from the arabic word lana yalinu lin yani lana meaning to be soft umar of course a reference to the name umar and so lin umar is easy to remember yani with because it refers to umar being more gentle lin umar 
That is what those, that word combination means. So these are just, as we mentioned, word combinations that have nothing in terms of topic or subject matter, nothing to do with recitation. They are purely constructed for the purpose of aiding in memorizing those letters, keeping the letters easily memorized. So the five letters, we don't have to remember, oh, which letter is it? Alif, is it? Ba, la. Lin, Umar, khalas, we have it. Lam, Noon, Ain, Mim, Ra. Lam, Noon, Ain, Mim, Ra. These five letters are in a station that is between Shidda, Aj, Aq, Aq, and Safness, which is Rikhwa, As, Ash, Ah. It is between those two. So when we look at the five letters of a Tawassut or Al Bayniya, this middle area, we find that they're not as strong as Shidda, but not as the, in terms of the continuation of the sound, they are not uh, uh, like the other category of Rikhwa. And so we look at the letters one by one. Al, Al, as is related with Lam. Al, it is not restricted like Aj, Ad, Ak, Ak. But at the same time, we don't have the same level of continuation as the letters of Rikhwa. As. Ash, uh, ah, and so on. An, an, an. So we hear a slight extension in sound, but not as much as the letters of Rikhwa. Ah, ah, ah. Again, a slight extension and continuation of the sound. And here again, we're not speaking about the voice. We set, we mention and reiterate. It is not the voice as was the case yesterday. Afwan, the breath. Oh, sorry, the breath or the air. Here we're looking at the sound of the letter, whether it is restricted or conti or the sound extends and is continue and continues. Uh, Umar, ah, mim, am, am. So again, we hear something of an extension, but not like ash, as ila akhiri dalik. Dra, al, al, al. Here again, something of an extension, but not like uh, that which is related to the, to the letters of Rikhwa. As we mentioned, Ikhwan, we have here an issue in relation to two letters. We have two letters that came up in yesterday's session, and that is Kaf and Ta. If you remember yesterday, we said that Kaf and Ta are from the letters of Hams. Sakata, 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 Fahathahu, Shachs. Ka, Ta, Kaf and Ta. And we said that the letters of Hams have with them the flowing of the breath and of air from the mouth. The st a strong level of expulsion of air from the mouth. While here, in today's session, when we're looking at Shidda, which is the restriction of sound, we find Kaf and Ta present again. And again, these two letters, to the extent we have some Going as far as saying the scholars are wrong. The scholars of Qira'a are wrong in adding Ta and Kaf from the letters or among the letters of Shidda. This then, Ikhwan, is an affair that uh, our Mashaykh uh, and our scholars, they have made clear, scholars of Qira'a, from them, Shaykh and Shaykh Ubaidullah al-Afghani uh, and others. And that is that the kaf and the ta, they have hams from an angle and they have shidda from another angle. They again, they have the flowing of air from one angle and they have restriction of sound from another.
كيف ذلك؟ If we look at kaf and ta and we add the hamza before it and we put sukun upon the kaf how does one recite that letter ak ak similarly with the ta if we were to add a sukun before it uh, afwana kasra before a hamza before it and place a sukun upon the letter itself what do we have at at and so we have when we look at these two pronunciation these these two letters and their pronunciation we see ikhwan that there is shidda from one angle hams from another we have the restriction of sound in the beginning of the recitation of the letter and then we have the flowing of the breath at the end of the recitation of the letter so if we were to look for example at kaf at, this is the first half at, and so we have shidda at, at, that is the shidda as far as the hams and the flowing of breath then that occurs in the second half of the pronunciation of the letter And so one half of the letter has shidda, one half of the letter has hams. Ta, the same. At, if we look at the first half, at, the second half, t, at. And so we have the flowing of breath in the second half, the restriction of the sound, and holding that letter at the point of its makhraj in its beginning. And thus it occurs among the letters of Shidda, or the two of them occur among the letters of Shidda, and they occur among the letters of Hams that we looked at yesterday. So today's session then revolves around Shidda, and then again, the difference between Hams and Shidda, our Hams and Rikhwa, since they, the most resemblant is the opposite of Hams. Hams has the restriction of sound, Rikhwa has the continuation of sound. And so yesterday we looked at the continuation and the expulsion of breath and air, which is hams. And so hams and rikhwa, the two of them have similarities. This one deals with the expulsion of air. This one deals with the continuation of sound. And many of the letters of hams are considered letters of rikhwa. But there are differences that are present. If you look at Shidda and the eight letters of Shidda, Ajid, Qattin, Bakat, Alif, Jim, Dal, Qaf, Ba, Ba, Kaf, Ta. If we look at these letters and then we add to them the five letters of Tawassut, the five letters in between them, Lin, Umar, Lam, Noon, Ain, Mim, Ra. What remains of those letters are all considered letters of Rikhwa, soft letters, letters of, yani, of softness, if you like. The letters of Rikhwa, many of them are the letters of, of Hams. For example, Tha is from the letters of Rikhwa, it is also a letter of Hams. Ha is from the letters of Rikhwa. It is also from the letters of Hams. Kha is from the letters of Rikhwa. It is also from the letters of Hams. Sakata fahathahu shakhsun. Seen from the letters of Rikhwa, also from the letters of Hams. Sheen from the letters of Rikhwa, also from the letters of Hams. Saad is from the letters of Rikhwa, also from the letters of Hams. Tha from the letters of Rikhwa, also from the letters of Hams. Ha from the letters of Rikhwa, also from the letters of Hams. But we likewise have some letters that are not considered from the letters of Hams. Dal, for example. And so when we look at Dal, we see Az. 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 One is able to 
continue the flow of that of the letter without having to breathe or to expel a large amount of air from the brain as as which revolves more around a vibrating sound within the area of the teeth and the tongue than it does as much upon the expulsion of breath from the mouth as which is another one of the letters al well while while uh, that does have something of expulsion of breath al alwalin al if you look at vad the pronunciation of vad then we see vad is as we mentioned earlier it is possible for a person to hold that sound to hold it at that point without uh the uh or strong expulsion of breath uh likewise wow is from uh the letters of rikhwa and it is not from the letters of hams Aw, aw. we don't have this great exhalation that you have with ash as ila so yani to summarize then the letters of shidda and its opposite rikhwa have between them a category known as tawassut the letters of shidda revolve around the restriction of sound and they are present within the letters ajid qattin bakat the letters that are between that are the letters of tawassut which are present within the word formations lin umar lam noon ain mim ra they are between the two all of the remaining letters are considered letters of rikhwa and they are letters of softness in terms of the continuation of sound and so here then this categorization or this category of sifa of characteristic of the letters revolve around sound the sound of the letter whether the sound of those letters continue or the sound of those letters is restricted in the place of uh, the makhraj the reason the scholars they mention there is softness or the uh, term or the opposite of shidda is rikhwa and softness is because of the fact that there is light dependency of the letter upon its makhraj so if you look uh, for example uh, at the letter sheen we said yesterday that sheen the letter or from the day before yesterday rather that sheen is from the center of the middle of the tongue that is its makhraj that is where it comes from but when the letter itself and its pronunciation doesn't depend heavily upon its makhraj it doesn't depend heavily upon the middle of the tongue yes in order to articulate the letter one uses the middle of the tongue but there isn't a heavy dependence upon the middle of the tongue the dependence is more upon the sound that is produced with the expulsion of the air passing over that area after the tongue is raised to close to the uh, upper palate uh, and one utters the letter ash a big part of the sound of the letter is not its dependence upon uh, the area of its origin but more a dependence upon the expulsion of the letter uh, sorry the breath from uh, the mouth upon the articulation of the letter ash and so the scholars they mention it is referred to as rikhwa lidha'f al-i'timad ala al-makhraj because of the weak nature of dependence upon the place of origin while shidda the letters of shidda have a strong dependence upon the place of origin edge it is almost as though the letter is halted in its makhraj edge ad aq aq ad ab yani it is almost as though it is halted and pinned into the area of its makhraj while the letters of rikhwa the exact opposite af ah aj af wan ash as yeah we hear the continuation of the sound uh, uh of those letters ikhwan these uh, characteristics so far we've looked yesterday at hams and jahar 
today's session we looked at we look at shidda and rikhwa uh, uh i think that these or this pace rather than uh taking a few since my original intent was to cover them all in one day i believe this pace is possibly better uh and this is still just muqaddimat ikhwan these are still just introductory lessons it actually we actually get into tajweed after we finish the study of the makharij and the sifat it is almost as though imam al-jazari uh he held this or, or laid this down as an introduction that you must know and know well in order to truly benefit from what is about to come yani the rest of the book uh, and lastly we'll mention ikhwan one of, one of the ways and the manners in which one can truly benefit from uh our study of these categorizations of the letters, the sifat of the huruf, the origins of the, the makharij, is ikhwan by practice. These are not just theoretical areas of study and we roll up our papers and then we finish. Ikhwan, when we learn these rules, we implement them. So one of the best ways to retain these rules is to put them into practice either with, with the elements or the pages of the Quran that we know and that we're familiar with or with the pages of the Quran that we're reading that we don't necessarily know and may not have, me and may not have memorized. This is how we put these rules ikhwan, into practice by looking at the areas that we have not recited and the areas that we know from the Quran as we recite then we recite with yani, our uh, utterances and with, with our recitation, we look at these letters. We look at what letter this falls into. What uh, category of letter is this from? What is the sifa or sifat, as the case may be, that relate to this letter? Yani, how does this letter affect my qira'ah? Of course, ikhwan, the letter affects one's recitation. And this is another issue when one looks at the manner in which one recites in terms of the letter counts, which is uh, the an important area of study, the azminatul huruf, the, uh, the amount of time that is to be spent upon that letter. When you recite, part of beautiful recitation is that the the uh, appropriate amount of time is spent upon the letter when one recites it. That is what beautifies uh, the recitation of uh, the Quran. That one gives the right to the letter and the appropriate amount of time in relation to letters that may be present. So if you were to look, for example, and we'll round up on this note. If we were to look at Shidda and at Tawassut. Yeah, this bainia and rikhwa, yani the strict recitation or the uh, continuation or the, or the restriction of the sound or the continuation of the sound and that which is between them, we see that we may have this implemented within one word itself. And the amount of time that we give to that one word may differ based upon the, the rights that are due to each letter. If you look, for example, at the statement of Allah, وَهُمْ يَسْتَبِشِرُونَ وَهُمْ يَسْتَبِشِرُونَ When we recite that letter, وَهُمْ يَسْتَبِشِرُونَ When we look at the letter itself, the word itself, we have رِخْوَة within it, we have shidda within it, we have tawassut within it. Look at the letters that are present. Yes, here we have seen. Seen is from the words or from the letters of Rikhwa. And so there's going to be something of a continuation of sound that is going to affect the duration of time that is given to that letter. Yes, tab, yes, tab, shirun. The ba is from the letters of Shidda. We said with the when it particularly when it has sukun upon it, and that is the case here, there is a manner in which it is to be recited. Ab, ab, while seen as, 
as. And then we have if one ends upon yastabishirun and comes to a pause and to a waqf, which we'll discuss and we'll study it towards the end of the book, then the waqf now turns the noon sakin. And so we have a noon that is sakin, and noon is from the letters of tawassut lin umar, which has a duration between the two. And so, yes, tabishirun. We have three different, three letters having sukun upon them, but they are given three different durations. Yes, tabishirun. Yes, tabishirun. Three different durations. Yes is given a longer duration. Yes, tab is given a minimal amount of time because it is restricted. It is from the letters of Shidda. Run, the noon at the end of our recitation. Yes, tabishirun. It is given that medial, that middle uh, amount of time, not given the duration that Shidda is given, not given the duration that Rikhwa is given, that continuation of sound. And so, Ikhwan, we practically, when we recite the Quran, we practically look at our, we use these principles, we take them and we implement them. When we recite, we reflect upon the page. We take a step, look at the rules of Tajweed that are present within it. Even though we may be familiar with the page, let us get, take a different analysis of that which we know. Look at it from these letters. Look at it from the sifat of the huruf. Am I reciting this uh, from its place of origin? Is it coming from its place of origin? Is it coming from, for example, the middle of the throat that it should, or from the lower part of the throat? Or is this qaf, am I giving the qaf its haq? Or is my qaf more like a kaf? All of these rules, we implement them as we recite. And so the knowledge of these rules, ikhwan, will aid us in returning to the book of Allah. And in giving the book of Allah some time. And reading the book of Allah and implementing that which we learn. Of course, ikhwan, each and every one of us wants our recitation of the Qur'an to be beautiful. And at the very least to be correct. And this is our starting point. As we develop, ikhwan, we're going to see more and more how a knowledge of these rules, though the rules, ikhwan, may be many, don't be scared at the, at the, uh, uh, the fact that we have a number of rules, that have a number of letters that need to be memorized and principles that we need to... Don't be scared of this, ikhwan. Each lesson, practice upon a page with each rule. Take one rule at a time, practice upon that page and just try and, uh, and detect the letters within this page as we move on to another rule try and implement that upon another page whether whether you know the page or not another page of the quran or just a few lines if your reading is slow yeah and implement the rules look for these letters uh, and understand what should be what they, what should be given to them in relation to what we already know and have memorized then let us revise and look over what we've memorized we may need uh, to uh, to implement the rule and to correct something that we are, are very, very used to reciting in a particular manner. These rules, Ikhwan, they are not just some type of academic study that we finish with. We fold our papers away and we put our notes away and that is done and we've studied Tajweed. La, these are to be implemented, ayyuhal Ikhwan. And I guarantee you, as we go along, the more we go along, the more we learn these rules, the more you will want to read the Qur'an. The more you will want to implement these rules within the Qur'an or revise what it is you know. And that is the beauty, ikhwan, of these sciences that service the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Since today's session,